Hello everyone, in today's video we'll be doing a tutorial on the Navigraph Charts plugin that you get from Microsoft Lights. Now this is a neat little tool. Now, one thing I do want to say though is it does require a subscription to Navigraph. So get before you can play with it, and you're also going to have to sign in, which is a relatively straightforward process. Well, let's get started. So first things first though, I'm climbing in here. We've got the Mooney 20 today because Mooney 20. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my mouse to the top of the screen. And you're going to notice after installing it and setting it all up, you're going to have this Navigraph Charts button. Now, when I press this, of course, what it's going to do is bring up this little pop-up menu that looks a little bit like this. Now, this is a really, really cool tool. And uh, one of the reasons I like this is you can do a lot of stuff here that we don't have to go do. Uh, the other huge advantage, too, is this is actually pop-outable. I don't know if that's a real word, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with it for today. So you can go and enjoy that. So what it does is it gives you the ability to set up flights. Again, we can come in here and customize our flights. You know, we can clear our flights that we don't want to see. There's all sorts of neat little pieces in here that you can do. But what you're going to notice up at the tippy top is we actually have a couple different things built in here that will actually make it very easy for us to access what we want to do informationally. Again, this is amazing that we just have this in the sim ready to rock. First thing we're going to notice is in the map view, you have this button here that allows you to change which mode your map is in. So for example, if I wanted to switch myself to a VFR chart, and I'm going to click on this button here, what that will do is that will go ahead and set yourself up here. Uh, you're going to get a little notice, by the way, that if you're not set up to the simulator, you're going to get this little notice about Simlink here. The purpose of this button here would basically be able to allow you to uh, synchronize your current position that you have. Now, one of the things you'll have to do is when you do want to actually use the Simlink, as I mentioned at the bottom, is you have a separate application that you're going to be getting through Navigraph for the purposes of using it. Uh, basically, what this does is this is going to allow you to link those two things together so that you can see exactly what you have at any given time. For the purposes of this video, however, we're not going to explore that aspect of things. Instead of, again, that will basically provide you with the ability to put a little moving kind of chart on side here. We're just interested in the basic functionality of the Navigraph charts. So what we can do, of course, is we come up here. Uh, we have a nice little handy dandy keyboard if you're in VR. We can go ahead and type in any details that we want. And what it will actually do is it will search the archives so they can identify things inside of it. So if I were to click on this, for example, uh, this is very similar for those of you who have four flight, I can actually get all sorts of critical data about it. So for example, I want to go ahead and identify this. I can actually click on it and I can see my lovely little airport uh, right here, ready to rock. One of the things I'm super impressed with this is if you actually look down at it, you can see the fact that all the major taxiways and charts and locations and everything is done. Now you can see right now, for example, we're up here at Signature. But this is all accurate, up-to-date information that you can constantly use back and forth to give you a lot of extra detail in your flight simulator experience that's built right in. Now the cool thing is you're not just limited to airports. Uh, for example, if I wanted to type in HFD, um, I'm not interested in the Hartford, I'm interested in HFD VOR. You'll notice if I click on that, it'll automatically center this, and it'll give me all sorts of critical things, like is it low power, low altitude, uh, do we have anything co-located, magnetic variation. It'll give me my identifiers on it, my coordinates, and of course things like elevation. It'll also tell me what role this particular one is. But one of the things that's really, really wild is you can actually see all the Victor Airways actually coming into it are already labeled for you. So if I actually come up here and say, let's say, IFR low, I want to see this chart in particular, you can see how clean this information is actually coming into your website here. Now, what I really appreciate here is uh, one of the main holds that we have is actually visible right here. I kind of got a kick out of this also the we got uh, hold right there as well. Now, this also will conclude things like if I wanted to do a waypoint, say I want to type in QT. If I click on that, what that will do is that'll actually take me to the QT waypoint. Now, one thing you observe here is QT is not visible on this chart. You're saying, well, it's on a high fire. No. Uh, come over to VFR. No, it's because this particular waypoint only exists on the ILS approach for only five going into Providence here. And again, no, with Providence, it already has all the critical information that I need as far as PDD and stuff like that goes. Now, in the old days, uh, we had all sorts of fun little places where we could do um, different types of NDBs. The problem with NDBs, though, is we have so few of them left that they're actually very difficult to kind of locate. So one of the things we could do is if we want to fly an NDB approach, we can convert back to this mode, and then we could go looking around in the particular spot for the particular symbols that would give us an NDB. Now, in the old days, we actually had one chilling right down here, but you can see that has been tweaked as well. Now, notice there are different types of symbols in here, and I'm not going to get into the different symbology. Well, we'll do that another day. But you'll observe, for example, we have VORs versus uh, TACANs in just a different way. The next page you're going to have is going to be your flights. Uh, the flights are super duper fun. Um, as you're going through these different ones, you can import flights directly out of SimBrief uh, if you want to go ahead and do one of those kind of options. You also have the ability to quickly create a new flight. So if we click on the new flight option, it's going to ask us to go ahead and pick some options. So let's say we're going from Bradley, and uh, we want to go ahead and pick it just like that. 
we're going to add this to the root. And let's say we're going to be traveling up to, um, let's see here, we'll go up to Manchester this year. MHT, oh, this is going to be pretty good. That'll be a pretty fun ride like that. So again, I can just slick it like that. Ooh, helps if you actually click the thing when you clicked it the first time. There we go. That yeah, looks pretty good to me. There we go. And now we're all set. So we have ourselves our takeoff and we have ourselves our destination. Now, if we were doing a straight up flight like this, of course, um, we could just do direct. But for our purposes, we're going to make things a little bit more complicated. That's what I'm actually going to do. And please don't sit here with your engine idle. Uh, you're just wasting fuel and it's very expensive to fly this plane. Trust me. So we're going to go ahead and pick our runway here. Well, again, if we needed to, we could come down here and actually click on Bradley if we need to take a look at any information on it. And again, we have all sorts of uh, things. We can get airport information. And I love this because it'll actually bring up the airport diagram right here for us. And again, we can come in here. We can edit it and things like that. Anything we need to do. Uh, one thing that I really like, though, is if you scroll down here, you've got all your critical information. But more importantly, when you hit Select Origin Runway, it'll actually break down the wind for you. Now, this wind is coming out of the sim right now. So you can see we have no wind. Um, of course, if this is Bradley, I can tell you right now we'd be taking this one. But all you have to do is click on that button. And what it will do is it'll apply that runway to it. And keep in mind, you can actually come in here and you can edit it if you need, or we can get information for it. Uh, departures, uh, it's going to be the BDL. Um, Bradley 6 is going to be the one that we're going to use. Uh, we definitely do not, we do not want the coastal. I want the Bradley 6. Very, very straightforward uh, to use for our approach here. Now, coming into Manchester, um, I don't actually want to do Manchester. I would rather add something along the way. And now you'll notice this cool button that says Auto Route. Uh, what the Auto Route button does is it will actually allow you to calculate a route. So I'm going to go ahead and push this button. It's going to say Pick an Airway uh, or a Mooney. Press the Create button. And it's going to go. Ta-da. And it's going to go ahead and calculate yourself a route that's going to get us there pretty smoothly. So it looks like it's going to be taking us up to Crib, and it's going to be taking us for either Tango 225, and it's going to bring us right down into Manchester. Keep in mind, at any point, of course, we can create... <laughs> that's an awesome waypoint name. Keep in mind, at any point, of course, we can adjust this. For example, if I left-click on anything on the actual screen, I can actually pick it myself. So if I wanted to, for example, add Darth, because um, that's an awesome name, I can then pick where I want to do it. So let's say I want to add it after I want to add KBDL here. So go ahead and press that one right there. It's going to go ahead and add that to my waypoint. Let's say we want to add this one right here. I'm just going to click on it like that. It's going to pick it for me. I'm going to add it to the root. We're going to add it after Darth. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of Crib because uh, Crib is just not required for this flight here. Let's see here. Crib, how you doing, Crib? You are a happy day, aren't you? And we can already have that one R kind of pre-selected and sort of ready to go for that. And again, at any point, we can always come over here and do direct edits for any particular point here. So let's see here. Crib, Crib, I love you, but I don't love you that much. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate that waypoint. And now we can see we have ourselves a nice, pretty solid setup that takes us all right over here to the east. And it's going to bring us up to Gardner. <laughs> a lot of parachuting in Gardner, be careful. And then we're going to shoot over to Manchester like that. Now, when it comes to picking out our destination, uh, well, obviously Manchester, we can click up here. We can get ourselves a handy dandy weather report. When we click on select runways, it'll break it down for us. Remember, we're flying with fake weather here, so there's no actual wind. We'll assume that we're going to do a straight in. I think they have a six. Yeah, they do have a six. I'm just going to left click on add to route. And what that will do is that'll actually pop that into our route for us. And now we have it. Now, if I were flying an ILS approach, or I want to fly an RNAV, or I want to stress myself out and do a different one, I can come in here and actually pick it. So notice it automatically knows what runway we selected earlier. So we have the ILS, we have the RNAV, and of course you have the other approaches should you require them. One of the things that's really wild though, so I click on this button right here, what it'll actually do is it'll bring up the approach plate itself. So you can actually have this right in front of you as you actually fly the approach, which is super duper. It's just that handy. You can also apply it directly onto the map if you want to have a little bit of fun like that. So by clicking this button, you can actually see that it draws the entire approach down here for us, making it very, very simple for us to identify what we need to do. Now, if we want to shut that off, we can do that. So I'm going to pick the ILS for six. I'm happy with that. Again, I would probably wouldn't fly an ILS unless I was doing some, uh, some work with uh, instrument approaches. Uh, Manchester is a really easy airport to get in and out of. And now I have myself an amazing little flight ready to go. We're going from Bradley to Manchester. Here's all of our routing up at the tippy top. Keep in mind, at any point, I can click on any of these options. And I can change, I can remove, I can even trick and drag if I want to move stuff around and get really silly. But it's just so, so darn handy that it gives me a lot of tools that usually I have my foreflight for built right into the sim. Now, one of the things you have here, which is really wild, let me go ahead and change my view here, is up in the top right corner, you have this little pop-out button. 
If you click on that, it actually breaks the screen out of Flight Sim, and I can actually put this in other places. So if I want to put this on a separate screen, for example, I can actually drag it right over there. That's a tremendously useful tool for me because now I can actually put it off the screen. Or if you're in VR, I've got this for me now in VR that I can actually look down at as I'm planning my actual route here. So I'm happy with all this. Everything looks good. Uh, sync with flight. Again, we can, if we had the sync option, the sim link, which I did not install, I just, again, another day for that kind of a thing. I'm happy with everything here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the save as button. It's going to ask you to create a little pin board. Again, we can create a bit. Uh, boo -boo 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 -boo. F1, why not? Press the create button. Boop. It's going to go ahead and save that for me. So now that we have all the critical information ready to rock. Now, you'll probably notice this button down here. Oh, this is just going to be collapsing it. And you'll also probably notice this button up here. This will allow you to directly type in your flight plan rather than doing it. Now, the reason I love this is if I wanted to copy paste the flight plan from a different source, for example, maybe I'm using FlightAware, I can just come in here, type this in, press the done button and look away for about two seconds. And just like that, it will automatically import all that data directly into here. Again, a tremendously, tremendously, tremendously useful tool. Other options that we have in here, and as you can see, we have this is all loaded up. We have an options page real quick. Oh, you'll notice it has a flight name, cruise altitude. <laughs> no, that is not correct. Uh, we're on Mooney and we're going east, so we're doing 7,000 feet. That's just how it is. And now we're going to assume this is a VFR. We have, of course, the different chart modes uh, should be desired to change the modes. Again, little subtle shifts when you do things like that. And of course, the last button you're going to notice over here on the right is the export button. Now, the interesting thing here is this is only going to be an active uh, ETC, avionics not supported, since avionics update one. The reason this is important for us is if I click on that, all we did is shove it into the um, this guy right here. So you'll notice if I go to Bradley Clearance now, I can now uh, request everything that I need to do to get us underway, but it will not necessarily load it into my actual GPS here. Flight simulator, load plane, select. So notice I can read flight simulator flight planes right off of it. So if I actually hit the load button, what it would actually do is it would read it right out of here, which is again, kind of a neat tool, but as you can see, it absolutely ruined everything here because I had that original flight plan locked into my handy dandy GPS, which is looking a little blank at me at the moment. Not that I'm worried about right now. Other options you're gonna see inside this Navigraph tab, tools on charts, again, hard to talk some days, is we're gonna have our little pin boards where we can have all sorts of different items. And of course you have this really cool tool called user waypoints. Now, the reason I get such a kick out of the user waypoints here is we can design our own waypoint. Notice this is tap, which I think is kind of a nice little touch here. Let's say, for example, I have a point of interest that I want to use on a VFR flight. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Let's uh, get everything uh, nice and clean here. Uh, clear. I'm just going to clear this out, make it a little bit safer. Let's say we're flying out of Bradley here. Again, I can just click on this here. I'm just going to open up that route. Uh, edit is the origin. Again, we have everything set up here. I'm going to just hit add. Actually, what I'll do real quickly is let's be, let's be even quicker. KBDL, and let's say I'm going to Poughkeepsie. Press the done button, and it's going to go. It's going to give me a nice little line that cuts across Connecticut. There, hey, there we go. Now let's say we want to add ourselves a VFR waypoint. Oh, that's not fair. You can't actually just have the one that I already want to add. Fine, be that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come here on the chart, and if I just click on something, you'll notice nothing happens. If I right click on something, however, what it will do is it'll give us the ability to actually create our own waypoints. So I'm going to press edit. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the chart and it's going to go ahead and create a waypoint for us. Again, you can see that that sets us up directly. Oh, I'm going to cancel right there. To create right click, long tap on the map. All I did is hold down the left click and let go. So what this has done now is this has created ourselves a handy dandy little waypoint that we have. Now the cool thing here is we can straight up add it to the root or we can add it as a user waypoint. Uh, bottom of res. I'll keep it nice and simple and we'll keep it in just the scope. We can make it global if I want to hit create. And what that will do now, and this is why it's so useful, is if I'm planning VFR, I can now put the dots on the chart themselves as I'm flying along here and actually see those components. Now, obviously, my next waypoint would be Torrington. Uh, again, if I'm flying traditional, click and hold. Well, that is easier waypoint. Torrington. I'm going to go ahead and press the Create button right there. That looks pretty good to me. And we'll go and continue. Um, what do I always use when I do this flight? Um, let's see, what's the other one I like to use? There's a very, very, actually Kent is very obvious. So I'll come down here, left click and hold. Use your waypoint, I'll call this Kent. That's actually in a big valley. So it's actually very easy to see. It's one of those things that I remember arguing with a flight instructor many years ago about. And then the last one is always use uh, Millbrook, which is going to be right over the side. Now, if I left click and hold here, you'll notice that it's going to give me the option. Again, I can say VFR airport waypoints, press create. 
And just like that, now I have created myself a bunch of handy dandy waypoints for actually flying this with visual flight rules, as opposed to being a kind of a, using the GPS, or using IFR flying or anything like that. Now I can just boop, 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 just like I would have in the old days. Now one of the cool things here is if you hit the edit button, you can actually delete all of these waypoints of the one whack here. And now the reason that could be useful is if you have kind of too much stuff going on, you can clean that out. The last button we're gonna take a look at is this lovely little settings button down here at the bottom. Close that out. What this does is this allows you to kind of tweak things depending on what you need here. Again, there's some really, really heavy, kind of your night theme if you want to make it a little bit darker. Again, I'm a four flight guy. That's what that looks like. We also have moving maps. I remember we disabled that. Uh, if we did have that enabled here, you actually see it kind of flying. And I love this little warning at the bottom. It's like, don't do this from actual navigation. So you have a pretty good idea. So as you can see, this is an absolutely fantastic tool. Uh, if you're looking for adding a little bit of uh, veracity, interesting stuff into here, um, one of the things that is handy is this is great for planning purposes. And again, you can do all this on the SimBrief website as well. You don't have to do this in game. But for those of you who are using the SimLink application, plus you're in virtual reality, this is an amazing tool that finally gives you those VFR charts to make those flights a little more authentic. Enjoy.